One year ago, Marquette Academy finished fourth in the state finals. Six years ago, Jabot Catholic won it all in Class 1A, and those two teams meet today in Peoria, Dozer Park, for your Class 1A baseball championship. And hi again, everybody, along with Hall of Famer Mark Lindo. I am Dave Bernhard. We are set for a good one here in Class 1A. Yesterday, Ottawa Marquette defeated Harvest Christian Academy 10-8, and on the other side, Jabot Catholic, a 12-4 win over Steelville, so they are here to battle for the 1A title. And Mark, the nerves, the jitters, what it comes down to is seven innings of solid baseball. All comes down to execution here, Dave, in the 1A state title game. We've seen that year after year. What I mean by that in further description is that whoever gets that key bunt down, whoever makes the routine play at a key time, whoever makes the great play at a routine time, all those things will add up to a championship that and as we've talked about throughout the weekend thus far both these pitchers if they're around the zone they'll give their team a chance to make plays and to win a state title Jabot Catholic comes into this game 27 and 8 Marquette Academy a 32 and 1 record they won their first 16 games of the year they've won their last 16 games of the year you're looking at the starting hurler for Marquette Academy, that is John Thompson. He gets the call here in the state title game. John Thompson, a senior or junior, right-handed pitcher. He's 6'4", 250 pounds. Pretty good numbers because you can't get better than 9-0. and 66 innings pitched, 66 strikeouts. Only 16 base on balls, a minuscule earned run average of 2.10. We're ready for 1A state championship baseball to call the first pitch in the entire ball game. The IHSA Hall of Fame voice, Dave Bernhard. Thank you very much. Mark, leadoff batter for Jabot Catholic will be Austin Sweeney. He's the senior second baseman. will be followed by Mark Brands. who will be doing the pitching today. Then Cole Buckner, the first baseman. Tim Reinholz, Ian Metcalf, and Tate Schilling hit four through six. Cameron Kinchel, Eric Schrader, and Josh Pappenberg round out the unit for head coach Andy Scare, who's in his 15th season, 244 wins, 257 losses. One and one count to Sweeney as we're underway. Sweeney, two hits yesterday, two RBIs. As Jabot had 11 hits yesterday, nine hits, 11 RBIs. Their guys drove in yesterday in a really solid offensive onslaught. Defensively for Marquette, Nick Melvin's in left, Logan Kamada in center, Jack Snook is the right fielder. Third baseman Shane Reynolds, shortstop Nate Melvin, Luke Couch is at second, Hayden Price is at first, and Jay Scott will do the catching for John Thompson. Our count is one and two. Right back off of Thompson's glove. And Sweeney will have himself an infield hit as Thompson throws the ball into the well, and that will advance Sweeney to second base. Now that's just a fundamental error on John Thompson. It will go as a physical error as well. That ball by Sweeney turned it right around, hit that ball hard. Good athletic play by Thompson to knock it down. But once he did and finally got his hand back on the baseball, he should have put that in the back pocket. Sweeney should be on first. Instead, the extra base is allowed on the errant throw over the first base dugout. That will bring a very dangerous hitter. He is the record holder in all-time hits in Jabot Catholic history. That's Mark Brands. He tripled yesterday, drove in a run. Over 150 career hits. He does not get cheated hitting out of the two-hole. Brands today will be doing the pitching. Situation with a two-hitter, man on base, nobody out. You think, okay, hit the ball to the right side. I think you just let Brantz hit. You just let him hit. 453 average, and he will squirt it into left field. Sweeney had to hold for just a moment at second. Back-to-back -back hits, puts runners first and third for the Hawks. See, and that's the idea. You don't really want to give up an out trying to go inside out. When you got a guy with over 150 career hits, you let him go ahead and attack the baseball. Nate Melvin was bunched a little bit toward the middle in respect to a would-be double play. And just strong enough was Brands to get that through the hole on the left side. Two up, two on. Now for Cole Buckner, the junior first baseman, a 402 average. Yesterday, Buckner was hitless in four at-bats. Andy Scare, the head coach, has some games he can play right here. Buckner will hit it to center field. This could be enough. Kamater deep in right center field. Tagging is Sweeney. He will score easily. And just like that, Jabot Catholic is on the board. 
Good job getting some elevation in the three hole. Buckner gets the run in. Sweeney was able to dance home. And on first base, solid base runner by Caleb Groman. Number 19, the courtesy runner. As he was halfway out, watched the ball be caught, and then just jogged back to first where he's safely there, and they can run him if they want. Cleanup hitter Tim Reinholds will come to the plate against Thompson. Reinholds, two for two yesterday, scored three times, drove in a run, walked twice. Every time you looked up, he was on base. There's where that throwing error by Thompson comes into play. Got him to second, and then to third, and now another advancement. This time by Groman, the ball back to the screen. So the early pressure being put on here by the Jabot Catholic Hawks. Reinholds had a walk-off grand slam and a sectional championship victory over Carrollton. That was a ball game that saw Jabot trailing until Reinholds did his damage. Good pitch inside on the hands. Ryan holds a 388 hitter on the season. Four home runs and 40 runs batted in. Those 40 RBIs, a team high. 16 doubles. He has gap power. And he'll lift this one to right center. Tagging it second is Groman. Here he comes. And he's there. Good base running, 90 feet closer. Groman puts himself in position to put some pressure on the catcher. Scott blocking all balls in the dirt now. Two outs, being a man on third base. Designated hitter is Ian Metcalf. He is batting for Will Simonton, hitting here into the fifth spot in the order. Thompson working from the stretch. I have to tell you, I like the powder blue uniforms that Marquette has come out in today. Yeah, a little bit different look. Championship game look. Quick set, right past Ian Metcalf. Todd Hopkins had his team here in 1999. They finished fourth. Had his team here last year, finished fourth. Got his team to the title game here this morning. Metcalf, a 341 batting average. I guess it's officially afternoon. This game was supposed to start at 11 a.m., a little bit late start because of the length of the third-place game. Third-place game won by Steelville, defeated Harvest Christian. That was a 12-6 game. Thompson right there, tight on Metcalf. A little two-seam fastball running in. Metcalf's got to shorten his swing right now, see if he gets up off the bottom of the barrel of the knob of the bat. He does just a little bit, see where his hands are at. Wants a little bit more bat acceleration, create bat speed and control here with two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a called strike three. We'll end the inning with the runner at third base. However, Jabot scores an RBI sacrifice fly from Cole Buckner. We'll go to the bottom of the first. The more you understand your insurance, the more successful you can be. I love explaining how proper coverage can help my customers achieve their goals. Watching them apply what they've learned from my class to their lives, it's inspiring. I believe anyone can achieve their goals if they just take simple steps. Find a representative near you at takesimplesteps.com. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise.
You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school championship action. On the hill for Jabot Catholic is Mark Brands. First batter he faces will be Nate Melvin for Marquette. So let's take a look at Brands, the all-everything. He'll throw the, get it up there about 88 miles an hour. He'll use a cutter and a curveball. Some changes. So a four-pitch in his repertoire. He misses just a bit outside. But Brands is indeed an ace, 9-0. 48 innings pitched. He struck out 68 batters in 48 innings pitched. Walked just 23, so pretty much pinpoint control as he serves that one up. That line drive heads right into the glove of Tim Reinhold, who had, Reinholds, who had him played perfectly to finish up on Brantz. Just 19 earned runs allowed for the senior. 2.77 earned run averages. Melvin hit that one right on the button, but right at Reinholds. We'll turn over to Luke Couch. Well, you rattle off those numbers from Mark Brands and Couch will take that pitch outside. And, and you think all you want to do is somehow get the breaks, have the schedule line up, have the weather cooperate so your ace can pitch in a championship ballgame. That's exactly what's happened here for yeah. Brands. Yeah, they could not be set up any better. He's got his full sequence. That ball's in on the nose, and it will be Austin Sweeney to make the leaping grab. A couple of balls hit hard here in the first two hitters, Melvin and Couch. I'll bring up Logan Kamater. Well, Couch is a gamer. There's no doubt that young sophomore 5'10", 150, knows how to handle a bat, knows how to handle himself, throws some leather. And this young man knows how to play the game as well. He'll be a collegiate player. It seems like he's been around forever as Kamater. Right in the outside corner for Kamater, a 417 batting average for Logan Kamater. Yesterday he had a couple of hits and three at-bats, drove in a couple of runs and scored twice. That's what a number three hitter does. Count evens up with a ball and a strike. Kamater's got all the tools. He can throw the baseball from the outfield. He can run it down from the outfield. He can hit. He can put the ball in the gaps with power. Good speed. He's got the full package. He's now down the short end of a one and two count. He'll be playing baseball at Monmouth next year. All state last year, probably the same kind of numbers this year as far as when the final ballots come out for the all state teams. Just misses. 16 straight to start the season for Marquette Academy. A loss on April 22nd to Peoria and Notre Dame. And then 16 straight takes them to this point. If they trail here, one to nothing. Kamada waits on it. This is spinning into foul territory, and that is a tough angle for third baseman Eric Schrader. Really good pitch, changing speeds by Brands right there as he definitely changed up. He took a good seven to nine miles off that pitch and getting out on his front foot. The timing was disrupted by Brands against Kamada there. Kamada was able to at least get the bat on the ball and fight it off. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Hard on the ground. Sweeney will suck it up. And that is a 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the first. Mark Brands cruises. We'll go to the second, a one nothing lead for Chabot. a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com.
To purchase a DVD keepsake copy of today's event, click on the blue Get the DVD button directly under your event video player or click on the Buy a DVD button on the top right-hand corner of the NFHS Network website. You can also click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. So we go to the top of the second. Thompson, very important. He tries to get a zero up on the board here. The first man he'll face is Tate Schilling. Tate Schilling was two out of three yesterday in there today, leading off the second inning with his job is to get on base right now. Anytime you lead off an inning, you want to get into the pitch count. You want to give your bench an extra chance to see a few pitches, read some timing, see the breaking ball, the rotation. All of those things become oh so important as you play a role in this game. It is indeed a team game. 2-0 to the sophomore shortstop. Schilling at shortstop today with Brands on the mound. John Thompson will deliver. And now 2-1. and one. See Thompson on his turn, on his pivot. You'll see him on this pitch. He actually rotates his hips back towards second base a little bit. A little bit unorthodox, but what that does, watch him hide the ball just a little bit longer against hitters. And that will squirt through the 5-6 hole. That's the third hit of the game, and it's the leadoff hit to start the top of the second inning. Tate Schilling, you mentioned just a sophomore, but he's hit 350 on the year. 15 RBIs, 22 runs scored, so he can be a productive player in that lineup as a youngster. Took that ball and just turned it right back around the hole. The shortstop at third kept his hands back and took that Thompson pitch back through the hole. Now we're at the seventh spot in the order, and Cameron Kinchlow, the left fielder. Let's see what Andy Scare looks to do here. Not show any bunt. He'll take it up for a strike, or take it up for a ball. One and zero. Oh. Outfield playing straight away, fairly deep in left field. Nick Melvin is giving a little respect to Kinchlow. Has 16 runs batted in this season. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Kinchlow, 5'10", 150-pound senior. And he's here in his 15th year. They won it all here in 2013. Now he'll show bunt. He somehow gets it down. The thought was second. They'll go to first. Kinchlow gets the job done on a tough pitch. Boy, if we get a chance to see that one again, you are going to talk about Kinchlow with great focus, great concentration. The game within the game, that pitch is bearing down on him, but he gets the barrel of the bat out in front of the hitting zone, keeps the barrel above the baseball, and gets that ball down. Outstanding bunt right there. Good team baseball by Jabot. That sets it up for Eric Schrader, junior third baseman. Schrader, a 250 hitter on the season. That will get away from the catcher, Jay Scott, and now just 90 feet away is Tate Schilling. That's the same as we saw Austin Sweeney, how important it is to be on third base. So thus far, Tate Schilling, as you see him in your picture right there, has done his job from the get-go. Get on, get over, and get closer. Marquette will play their infield back. Corners even with the bags. Now shortstop Nate Melvin playing about halfway. He's creeping a bit. Ball is striking it out with a runner at third. Throughout the first eight games of this tournament, Marquette had allowed only, what, six runs. The ball is fouled away. On the other side, you have Jabot. Yesterday, they scored 12 runs. They have scored 72 runs in their six tournament games. And they have allowed just 14. One word for that, domination. Check in with that 27-8 and eight record. Marquette had a couple really tough sectional tests. They beat a good Delavan team 2 to nothing. In that very same tournament, they had to win a one to nothing game as well against Leroy. And then they were down 3-1 to one to Salt Fork. And they won that ball game with nine runs to win a 10-4 to four game. So sectional and super sectional, they did an outstanding job winning close ball games and one come from behind ball game. One ball, two strikes in and out to Schrader. Oh, 
able to hang back and stays alive. Really good job by Schrader there. His job is to put the ball in play. You take a look at the Marquette defense. They are playing back on the infield, so they're conceding a run. Schrader's got one job only, and that's to make contact right now. Make contact. He fouled off a breaking ball. He's going to have to fight off a fastball here. That nearly scrapes that maroon jersey. He's taking a count now to two and two. One out, runner at third. And already a one to nothing lead thanks to a first inning sacrifice fly. And look at the adjustment Schrader's made. He's way up off the bottom of the bat. Very smart, very unselfish. Put the big swing away, get the small swing, put the ball in play, get yourself a ribeye. That nearly scrapes the elbow, and the count has gone to three and two. John Thompson needs to come with one here. He does not want to play first and third. He tried to hold back. He did not. And that will be the second out of the inning, the second strikeout of the game for Thompson. It comes in a big spot. Gary Taylor, home plate umpire, got some help from his first plate umpire, John Diesbeck, and he did indeed ring him up. That was a good call, a strikeout. We've talked about how Thompson can punch out. He got a big one right there. Left-handed hitting junior catcher Josh Pappenberg with two outs here in the top of the second inning. Got a quick glance at speedy center fielder Logan Kamater. Kamater can cover so much ground in center field, and that's why the, the two corner outfielders are shaded a little bit more towards the lines because they know Kamater can go get it. Good picture there of the big gaps and the trust of the speed of Kamater in his instinct for the ball off the bat. Two outs and a one on one count to Pappenberg, the number nine hitter in the Hawks order. He had a double yesterday and a one for four day. Big breaking ball. One and two. And I know you're a fan. We see Thompson working with the stretch, even with two outs and a runner at third. You're a big fan of the stretch with big, runner third. Big fan of the stretch all the time. Hold runners as close as you can. Stop any any loose ball in the dirt. The 59-footer. You just hold that runner a little bit longer. The threat of a pickoff. All good stuff that helps your defense. And Heppenberg will be rung up on strikes. So with a runner at third and one out, Thompson goes strikeout, strikeout to end the inning. And we'll go to the bottom of the second one. Chabot with a one nothing lead. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. All right, this is Adam. Take two. Mark. Yes. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. This championship event is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Thousands of young athletes have their season ended by ACL injuries. Learn how to keep them safe with our ACL injury prevention course at nfhslearn.com slash courses. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple devices. Download the app from the App Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. And those folks are here at Dozer Park in Peoria. Good crowd here for this 1A title game. Marquette Crusaders out of LaSalle County. Dodging the rain, the floods that they've had throughout this tough spring. Their football field was flooded. 
They find themselves here in Peoria trying to cheer their team on to a state championship. And right now I'm going to cheer Max Donahue into leading off this half inning. So you have LaSalle County taking on Randolph County. Jabot Catholic located just a touch southeast of St. Louis in Waterloo. Donahue came in as a 282 hitter into the tournament, but he does indeed have gap power. Rands delivers very quickly on top of Donahue. 0-2, 282 hitter on the season, 19 runs batted in. He's batting for the pitcher, John Thompson. This is fisted and down it hits the infield dirt. Donahue will make the big turn at first. He will hold right there. Well, it's not how hard you hit him, but where you hit him. Wee Willie Keeler hit him where they ain't. A lot of people haven't heard of Wee Willie, but he made a living doing that. 0-2 oh, count, and he just fists this ball. Look at how strong he is. Right up toward the knob of the bat, but he is so strong. He inside out that ball. Got it right over Eric Schrader. Leadoff man is on as Marquette chasing one early on. one nothing. Jabot Catholic ahead here in the bottom of the second. And that brings up Jake Snook, senior right fielder. First pitch to him is hit hard to left field and deep. This one is gone. The second home run of the year was a no-doubter. It puts Marquette on top 2-1, to one, and it just builds on the day that Snook had yesterday when he was 4-for-5 for with three RBIs. He gets two here in the title game. Seeing the ball like a beach ball, that was a breaking ball that hung right at the five spot. He flat out turned it around. That was DLG. Definitely long gone was that home run, and he has ignited the Otto Marquette crowd. And your call was outstanding, Dave Bernard, because the, your voice influx on the contact of the bat was, that ball's gone, basically. Well, that was the same feeling that Cameron Kinchlow had. Here it is. That is a good stroke right there, and he knew it. What a sound. Halfway up on the berm. <laughs> her mother up on the hill had to protect her, her <laughs> youngster. Boy, and how about that explosion from the third base side oh of goodness. this field? That may have been our most exciting play of the day. Maybe the Grand Slam yesterday. would, But there's that, that one it did ignited the crowd big time. Hayden Price on a three-hopper out to the shortstop Schilling. One out. Well, I got the feeling the Marquette teammates could not wait for Snook to get around the bases and get to home plate. You know what? The savvy, though, that Brands has. Very impressed. He went, goes and gets the next hitter. He was not shaken at all. Give me the ball. Get next out. It's a long baseball game. That young man has a very cerebral approach to the game. That'll be a foul ball. Well, Mark Brands, not only a cerebral approach to the game, how about a cerebral approach academically? A 33 ACT for Brands. He's going to try to walk on at Bellarmine University in Louisville. Yeah, and from what I've seen in two days, he can play at Bellarmine. Yep. Division II school. They've gotten themselves a good one to come to them. A great student. An excellent baseball player. We had a chance to visit with him. A very fine young man. Well-spoken, articulates. One strike pitch. Ball striking it out here in the bottom of the second inning. It's turned overcast here in Peoria. The threat of rain is really not supposed to hit us until later this afternoon when we're into two-way action. Two balls and one strike. 82 degrees right now, 58% humidity. The wind is 11 miles per hour. And it's shifted a little bit, blowing out towards left a little now. See those flags left center field? Schilling will get another chance off the backhand and throw. Not in time. Tate Schilling did everything he could do. Nick Melvin just flat out beat it. Speed killed as he just out route ran this baseball. Schilling went to his knee to make this play on the backhand side. 
Really solid stop and had some giddy up on the throw, but too much speed by Nick Melvin for the infield hit. Jay Scott will bat with one out and a runner on first. He's showing bunt here very early. Schrader coming in hard from third, and he'll push it to the first base side. Nobody there! Some confusion on the bunt defense. Or Jay Scott completely bamboozled the Chabot defense. I love the bunt game, and I love the bunt game even more the lower the level you go. You put the ball on the grass and make plays, make teams make plays both physically and in this case mentally, a, a mental breakdown. That one hurts. You get yourself a base hit. You know what, Scott? Not the best batting average in the world. We all know that. That's why he was called to bunt. But he executed right there, hitting 188 coming in. Todd Hopkins says move a guy over for our lineup, and he executes that immediately, puts the ball, pushes it down the first baseline, and he got about 80 feet there, 10 feet to go, and his hands were already in there. He knew <laughs> he said, nobody here to get me. The celebration started. You know what's wonderful about this is, and you've been there in the gym, outside in the cold weather, the hours and hours and hours of bunting drills that players can get tired of. And they just think, why am I doing this? Well, because you may be playing in a state title ball game, and you may get one shot at it. And get it done. Courtesy runner in for the catcher is Evan Green. Runners first and second, one out. Number nine hitter Shane Reynolds. Four hits in the inning. Here for Ottawa Marquette. Reynolds had a hit in four at-bats yesterday. 378 average on the season coming to Peoria. Two runs in on a two-run homer, a bomb from Jack Snook. Tried to hold up. They will ask, and he did. Interesting alignment right now because first baseman Cole Buckner in in front of the grass. Now he moves back a little bit. Because Sweeney was way over toward first. There was a big hole right up the middle. Now they readjust their defensive alignment. And that'll be off the glove into right field. Melvin had to hold because Sweeney nearly pulled that one in. But the sacks are filled with Crusaders. And we had just referred to their defensive alignment. He was a little bit out of what I would call a normal position. Now, we're not privy to know what Andy scare where he wanted him, but in a normal position, he makes that play. Not much in regards to analytics in these games, meaning tendencies or spray charts, what have you, because these teams are from different parts of the state and don't know each other besides probably yesterday's charts. Leadoff hitter for the Crusaders, Nate Melvin, will come up with the bases loaded and one out. Middle infield is back. The corners are in. Left fielder Cameron Kinchelow playing fairly shallow for Melvin. Does not have a home run this year. 386 hitter for the leadoff batter. He does have 10 doubles and three triples, however. Now look at another breaking ball for a strike. Franz needs a pitch here. With one out. This will get out of play. Okay, there's really only two choices right here. Hard high or slow low. Slow low, breaking ball in the dirt, you put a little bit of pressure on your catcher. Hard high, you got to keep the ball away from anybody hit, hit batsman. We've seen so many times this weekend. He'll go right side. That will get through. Nick Melvin will score. Green being waved around. He's in. It's a two-run single for Nate Melvin.
Nate Melvin took advantage of the infield again being misaligned in regards to the bases loaded to where they had to line up for double plays. First baseman was playing in front, but shorter angles that time for the Jabot defense. And that allowed Nate Melvin to get that ball through for a big two RBI single. They got two hundreds in scoring position right now. Reynolds went all the way around to third. Melvin went to second on the throw home. And now the infield in tight on the grass. Simonton got that ball in in a hurry. They let it go through. He does a really nice job here. Cut. We got a decently close play at home, but safely in with the second run was the pinch runner for Scott. Luke Couch is at the plate, lined out to second his first time up. Remember, a couple of balls were hit hard in the first inning, and that just sizzles past the runner at third, Shane Reynolds. Four runs, six hits, and one out here in the bottom of the second. Todd Hopkins very demonstrably telling Shane Reynolds, make sure you're walking down the line and foul. Now, he's only heard that 5,000 times <laughs> in his life, but coaches will do it 5,001 if that's what it takes to keep your player doing things fundamentally correct. Well, they squeeze here, infield's in. Got a lot of angle to slap a ball through. If you think Couch can handle the bat, you let him swing. Well, look how far up he is off that knob with a Noah two count. And he'll get it past Sweeney on the pull in infield. Reynolds scores. Melvin scores. It's a six-run inning in the second. And that's exactly what it was. That is not the first, not the second, but the third time this inning, you or I have referred to the pulled in infield to the angles. That, in a normal situation, is a ground ball to second base. You know, a little bit toward the middle, but instead, because of the deficit right now, it was four to one. Javot opted to play their infield in, and because of that, Couch was able to get that ball past the diving Sweeney. Logan Kumater will look to keep this ball rolling. There it is right there. Just a ground ball up the middle. Hit pretty hard, but on the grass was Sweeney. So taking advantage, Luke Couch. He's going to run this pitch. No, He stays. Kamada, though, will rifle this one to right center field. Couch round second. He heads to third. Kamada will have a double. Couch will pull up at second, and this inning continues. Well, right now they are swinging it free and easy. They have eight hits up on the board already. Six runs and counting in this inning, and it's a blitzkrieg. Otto Marquette on a crusade, if you will. Now they get somebody up in the Jabot bullpen. And catcher Josh Pappenberg buying some time as he has a conversation with Brands. He had a one, two, three first inning. And it has been anything but, as Mark said, six runs, eight hits. Mitch Nolan, the right-hander who pitched one and two-thirds innings, only threw 14 pitches yesterday, is the man that Jabot has up and getting ready in a hurry. Max Donahue will bat for the second time this inning. And he'll get a base hit to right field. Couch scores easily. Here comes Kamada. Two more runs for the Crusaders. I tell you what, if the Crusaders win this baseball game, up 8-1 to one now, a lot of baseball to be played, do you think when the stories come for years to come, will they talk about, hey, remember the second inning? Because <laughs> that's what it's been. It's been just a blitzkrieg of inning. And how about Donahue? His first hit went about, 80, about 95 feet. And that one, he just roped into right field. The hits are pouring. Last time this guy came to the plate, Jack Snook swung at the first pitch and hit a home run halfway up the berm, berm over the left field fence. And at that time, which seems like maybe just 10 minutes ago, it gave Marquette a two to one lead. And that's right where that umbrella <laughs> well, is. Well, she's up. protecting her child. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that guy's up again. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go right side, and it will hang up long enough for Simonton to make the catch for the second out. Uh, this has been a fun inning if you're a Marquette Crusader fan watching them swing the bat. That young man, two hits an inning right there on your screen. Max Donahue. Hayden Price. He bounced out to the shortstop. 
for the first out of this inning. There goes Donahue. The tapper past Brands. Schilling. Slick play to close out the inning. However, the Ottawa Marquette Academy fans rise to their feet. They have an eight spot, and they lead it eight to one. The more you understand your insurance, the more successful you can be. I love explaining how proper coverage can help my customers achieve their goals. Watching them apply what they've learned from my class to their lives, it's inspiring. I believe anyone can achieve their goals if they just take simple steps. Find a representative near you at takesimplesteps.com. All right, this is Adam, take two. Yes. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I would encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. This event is brought to you by Champion. Since 1919, Champion has created the durable, authentic sportswear you need to conquer your goals. As the official uniform and apparel provider for the NFHS, Champion helps athletes at every level make their mark, the mark of a champion. View our apparel today at champion.com. High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school sports. And how about John Thompson, the pitcher for Marquette? When he walked off the mound the last time, his team was trailing one to nothing. He's back out there, and all of a sudden he looks up the scoreboard. He's leading 8-1. to one. And he should come out juiced and rejuvenated. He entices a ground ball that Hayden Price just sits on. You throw up a zero in this half inning, you've gained momentum. You're just going to seize momentum if you hold them and check this inning. That big eight up on the board, a snowman, if you will. The inning that they'll talk about in Otto Marquette baseball if they are continue to be a championship team here this morning. Austin Sweeney with the ground out, and Mark Brands will come to the plate. Brands had a single in the first inning. Brands with that crouched stance. Then he actually reflexes and becomes a little bit more erect in his stance. But that young man, over 150 career hits. He knows what he's doing with the bat in his hand. 453 average. Had some difficulty on the mound. As Marquette came out, just a hacking and slashing. Brand sizzles it by his third base coach, Andy Scare, who did not flinch. Nick Melvin to track it down in the left field corner. Andy Scare, Freeburg High School graduate. Went to Kaskaskia College where he played baseball, then on to SIU Edwardsville. Back in 2013 when Jabot Catholic won the state title, Andy Scare was the Coach of the year in class 1A. Marquette had nine hits all in that inning. Pretty amazing. And it happened in fast. Yes. We've been talking about the problem all weekend long with pitchers based on balls. That wasn't an issue. It was based on mm. hits. <laughs> <laughs> and the softest hit of the inning was that first hit. Yep. Three balls and two strikes now to Brands with one out. Here's the 3-2. Just a bit inside. <laughs> Brands glances over his shoulder as he heads down to first. That ball went a good two feet <laughs> behind Brands. It was a breaking ball on 3-2 that he just got underneath. The ball slipped out of his hand, almost like a Frisbee. And the free runner on first base. K-1 
Caleb Groman now becomes that runner as he is the courtesy runner once again for Brent. Cole Buckner had a sacrifice fly in the first inning. That gave Jabot Catholic the early one to nothing lead. That was a quick lead of one to nothing. That was three batters into the game. Pitch down and in. So here you are, you're, you're Jabot Catholic. You look up at the scoreboard. If you look to the right, you see eight to one. Yeah. We're down eight to one. But if you look to the left, there's a whole lot of blank space. There's a lot of innings to be played here. You want to chip away, get two or three this inning. That's and a good start. That'll be a way to do it. That will advance Groman to second. Or the Marquette Crusader outfield playing very deep. They were playing very deep for Buckner. Now they're not moving at all for Rhino. So Kumater is back. Kumater's back, Dave, 370 feet in center field. That's about that's, as deep as I've seen a center fielder play here. Yeah, here. I mean, that, that's his nor that's where he's positioning himself, about 370 feet from home plate. Tim Reinholds is at the plate. Well, the wind is blowing out that way just a little bit. It's not a, a strong wind by any means, only probably about 10 miles per hour. So there are the flags. They have been shifting around a little bit. Now they are going from left to right. Reinholds will let that ball fall inside. It's 2-0. and oh. Nate Melvin holding from behind in the shortstop position. Not real concerned right now. They're more concerned with hitter than they are with base runners. Fouled back and out of play. For Ryan Holtz, just a junior hitting in the cleanup spot. 388 average, four homers, 40 runs batted in. I think Thompson might want to be encouraged from his teammates from the bench, get his rhythm going. He was in good rhythm. Now the pace of the game has slowed down. He wants to get it and throw it. Well, after he got Sweeney to start this inning, he ended up walking Brands, and that is like the complete no-no, right? After your team gets you eight runs. Buckner follows with a single, first and second, and a 3-1 count here to Reinholz. That ball is just wide of the bag. That was a good hack by Reinholz. Ian Metcalf waits on deck. You'll see all of the Jabot Catholic players with pink wristbands. Reinholds will step in. And that is in memory of the mother of Ian Metcalf. Three balls, two strikes. We've got more on that. And this one comes straight back at us. Ian Metcalf's mother, Kelly, passed away May 19th. That was the week before the sectional. All the fans are wearing pink. Players have initials on their cap. There are the pink wristbands that all the players are wearing as well. It was such an emotional time, obviously. Well, this stay in play. Right by the Jabot dugout and unable to get there is Hayden Price. All the players, the Jabot players came to a visitation in uniform. And as Ian Metcalf said, it was a, it was a beautiful moment. And he's credited Andy Scare, the head coach, with being his rock all season long. You see Price trying to chase that one down. Couldn't square up on that baseball to make a catch. And they also have K.M. Kelly's initials on their baseball caps. In memory of Kelly. Reinholds rips this one to left field. Roman being waved. An RBI single from Reinholz, and here come the Hawks. Boy, what a really good at bat. He fouled off a couple quality pitches, kept his hands back there on that 3-2 pitch, and just laced that in the left field. Nick Melman gets it in in a hurry. Shane Reynolds cuts the ball off on the way. Watch him pull his hands in. Melman gets it in a hurry, and here's the cut right there. And the score at home, but just for hesitation, Reynolds held on to the baseball. Or it might have been a much closer play at home plate. Brad Waldron, their pitching coach on the mound. Ian Metcalf will come to the plate. And Metcalf decided through all that adversity we're talking about his mother passing away here just a few weeks ago. He 
didn't know if he was going to play in the sectional, you know, whether emotionally, but he drove to the field, he saw his teammates waiting for him, and he decided right there, he said, I'm not going to let them kick butt without me. <laughs> That's a great quote for a young man who needed his teammates at that point in his life. That's the bond of a team. We always talk about high school sports, but I think all levels, all teams rally around each other. When a comrade is in need of support, teammates are there. And Calf choking up a little bit on that bat. We've seen that all weekend long. He's hitting for the right fielder, Will Simonton. Metcalf 341, 26 RBIs. Love that Red Hawk logo up on the scoreboard. Really a sharp looking Red Hawk that they use for their team logo. Bold and strong. There he is up at the bottom of the bat. There you see his double pink wristbands in honor of his mother. And that was behind Metcalf. And did it get him? <laughs> so here's what I think They'll happened. for help. <laughs> I think what happened here is uh, Metcalf thought maybe it hit me. And I think he got some encouragement from his teammates that, you know, go down. We get to go to first. I don't think so on that replay. You know, that's a great job by Jay Scott, the catcher. That ball disappears behind Metcalf. He's able to get a glove on it and keep it right there. Metcalf will stay in a batter's box. Good job of the umpires discussing it and making sure that they had agreement. Gary Taylor, John Despeck, and John Allen. We had a very scary situation in our third place game in 1A. Umpire working to bases, Rocky Hull, was hit by a line drive and went down. Chance for two here. Four, six, not going to happen. The ball gets away and a run will score. Boy, you open up the door right there. That was Taylor made double play. Couch got it to Melvin in a hurry. Melvin comes across second base after the force out at second. He had time to get Metcalf, but he just short hops his first baseman price. And instead of no runs on the board and back in the dugout, they give him a run, give up an extra runner in scoring position. Tate Schilling will hit with two outs. Schilling single to left his first time up. We've already had 14 hits in this game, and we have not completed two and a half innings. And that will clip Schilling. Runners first and second, two outs for Cameron Kinchlow. So they come back with two runs of their own. Does Jabot. Again, I look at that scoreboard in right field, and those two runs look bigger than the actual digit would indicate. Well, and we talked about it at the onset of the inning. They need two or three. Well, they've already got that job done. This team at different times this year has put up 10 runs, 14, 14, 10, 18, 10, 12. Will this stay fair? It does. And that will be an infield hit to load the bases. Cameron Kinchlow reaches. And he gets an infield chop, if you will, as I was reading that, because I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13, 15, 17, 19 times. 19 times Andy Scare's team has recorded double-digit runs. So they can put points on the board, and they keep this inning alive. And remember, that was a key error on the would-be 4-6-3 double play that kept the inning alive. Two errors today for Marquette. A big at bat here from Eric Schrader. Curveball for a strike. Schrader was a strikeout victim one inning ago. He's the eighth man to bat in this inning. Ball and a strike. Runner at third is Ian Metcalf. Tate Schilling at second. Cameron Kinchlow is at first. Big gap in left center field. If Schrader can find that, he could clear the bases. Been an inning of labor here for Thompson. 
But yet he has the count now in his favor at one ball and two strikes. Thompson's already thrown 62 pitches. We have two outs in the third. Long look in. The one two pitch with two outs. We'll spin out to Luke Couch. That's a big out. But two big runs go on the board. Three hits in the inning, throw in an error, and it's an eight to three game as we go to the bottom of the third. A civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carry-out is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. In a hurry but want a fresh, affordable meal to serve your family or friends, Biagi's Pronto Packs make it easy to enjoy an authentic Italian meal at home or on the go. Perfectly sized to serve four to five people and starting at only $30, Pronto Packs include your choice of a pasta or two pizzas with a house or Caesar salad and freshly baked bread with Biagi's butter for dipping. Or if you're planning a meal for a large group, just ask for their party pan, sized for eight to 12 guests and ready for pickup with 24 hours advance notice. With six Illinois locations, Biagi's carryout is the perfect solution for your busy lifestyle. Well, Jabot answers with two, answers the eighth spot of Marquette with two in the top of the third. Lead off the bottom of the third, Nick Melvin, who had a base hit his first time up in that big eight-run inning, leads things off. And if you're Marquette, it's kind of the same mind game. You do not have to get an eight-run inning, but you'd actually like to score one again this inning. Play for one and regain that momentum. One inning ago, Nick Melvin started a string of eight straight hits, and he's going to start maybe a new one here. In the third inning, it was Melvin, Scott, Reynolds, Melvin, brothers, Couch, Kamater, Donahue. Make that seven straight hits. Seven of the nine hits in that inning came in succession. Put eight runs on the board. The first two was a long bomb by Jack Snook, who just ignited their crowd and got that inning going. Jay Scott had a key bunt. He ended up funny for a base hit. He's going to look to bunt here, too. Last time he pushed it to first, nobody covered first base. He's going to push it that way again. A little hesitation as the shortstop that time, Tate Schilling, was a little bit hesitant as whether he was going to the bag. Good decision by Brands to go to first. Sacrifice successful. Two plate appearances, two good bunts from Jay Scott. See if they meet him at the dugout because he was called upon by his coach to do whatever it needed to move a runner along. We said play for one. He got the job done. Not an easy thing to do, but Scott with two successful push bunts to the right side. You can tell he takes pride in that. Shane Reynolds had a single last inning. He checks it up, hitting out of the ninth spot in the order. You no, know, it's interesting, uh, Todd Hopkins, he's had his number eight hitter bunt twice. And again, we've said the offensive numbers for Jay Scott, not that great. But the other side of that, and I know this is more old school that goes against all the numbers that we see as far as Major League Baseball is concerned. After this 0-1 pitch, I'll tell you where I'm going with that. Reynolds takes up high. You had an 8-1 lead, he gave up a couple of runs. Now, if I'm Todd Hopkins, I'm thinking... 
I'll take a run this next yep. inning. I'll get a run back. If I don't get two back, I'm fine. So he's playing for five a run at a time with the five-run lead. Yeah. You want to re-seize momentum after that two spot that Javol put up on the on the board. Count is one and one with one out to Shane Reynolds and Nick Melvin at second. Reynolds did not care for that one. Todd Hopkins, a graduate of Putnam County High School, so he finds himself very close to home, LaSalle County. Went to Aurora University, went to Eureka. Ultimately went to the Illinois High School Baseball Coach Association Hall of Fame. Reynolds will go down swinging. That's the first strikeout of the game. For Mark Brands, you talked about his high strikeout numbers. This is his first today. That's a good pitch. That's a 12-6 breaking ball. That one had late rotation, late bite, straight down. Changing the plane off the barrel of Reynolds. Go to the top of the order and Nate Melvin, senior shortstop, will bat for the third time in three innings. You know, another thing with uh, Todd Hopkins, that uh, he played in the Peoria Sunday Morning League. He was on the all-star team there. And that was an interesting thing. I don't know if they still have it in Peoria, but uh, Sunday, y it was baseball. It wasn't slow pitch softball. It was the real deal. Ex-Bradley players, other people from the community. I mean, it was serious baseball players, and it was good baseball. You go out on a Sunday morning and around town and watch some good ball. In fact, uh, I believe, I want to make sure I get this right. I believe Guy Hoffman. Remember Guy Hoffman, Guy the Hoffman. lefty? I believe yeah. he came through... That Sunday that's Sunday morning. Where he was, that's where he was scouted, exactly. Left handed pitcher, pitch for several major league teams. Count one and one to Melvin. Two gun, a runner at second. One of those Marquette Academy hitters just trying to roll that shoulder in, but that ball doesn't stay there. It, a nice break to it from Brands. And later on, Coach Hopkins did indeed play some 12 inch softball, and he actually played with Luke Couch's dad, Kevin. So they go way back. Looking to steal third, and the ball gets away, and here comes a runner home, and he's safe. So in a drop third strike, and a stolen base attempt from third by Nick Melvin, the ball gets far enough away, enables Nate Melvin to beat it at first base, and allows Nick Melvin to score, and there is the run that the bunt set up. What an exciting play and a well-executed play. It was indeed by Nick Melvin. Got to love speed. Buckner knew he had a play in front of him. It wasn't for lack of focus, but you could see that Melvin, once he made third base, he got about five feet off. He, he, he had decided if they throw, which they have to, I'm going. And there goes Nate Melvin looking to steal second, and he does. Ah, creativity on the bases, speed on the bases, aggressiveness, maybe a little bit of reckless abandon, to be honest with you. And I say that affectionately. Make the defense beat you. Brands from a stretch, a run in in the inning. That wasn't close. Right back at us, but not close. I read the flight of the ball all the way. Had a little giddy up on it, though. He was going right at Eric, so I was fine. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Can you operate a camera if we uh, had a situation here? Not quite like Eric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, could you point it in the right direction? I could do that, but I don't know what all the buttons mean. <laughs> Too many buttons on that. <laughs> you know, why don't you just start pushing them now and see what happens? <laughs> I don't think so. We might be off the air in seconds. <laughs> two balls, one strike, two outs to Luke Couch. Couch drove in a couple of runs in the second inning. Waits on the curveball, spoils it, and puts it on the uh, two rows from the top of the level of the concourse. You know, we've, we've debunked the theory all weekend about pitching, winning championships, because there have been runs, a plethora of runs on the board all week long, all weekend long. This game number six of eight on this championship weekend, 1A and 2A. Pitch smothered by Pappenberg. However, Nate Melvin reads the ball in the dirt, and he'll head to third. 
Great read by Melvin. What he is taught to do is on second base. He has his initial leadoff. Then as the pitch comes, he has his secondary leadoff. Then he's taught to watch the ball. You watch the flight of the ball. If you see it spinning away, yes, indeed, you make an attempt to get the extra base. Couch will go down swinging. However, a run goes on the board. For Marquette, they get a run back that Jabot scored in the top of the third. We've played three. It's a 9-3 lead for the Crusaders from Marquette Academy. I had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. This is Class 1A State Championship Ball Game, and you are watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois High School Championship action. This is your 1A title game. Later today, we will have Pleasant Plains and Tutopolis meeting for the 2A championship. That should be a good one. Two storied programs. Combined five state championships. Josh Pappenberg to lead it off here in the top of the fourth. He is the only Jabot player who did not hit last inning. And yet, two runs on the board. They left three. Jabot has left five runners on here in the first three innings. I was looking at the numbers. You talk about the offensive numbers through the course of the season for these two teams, Mark. How about just in this tournament? They've played 10 innings, okay? Combined, these two teams have combined for 34 runs and 39 hits. Wow. Omnipotent offenses, both of them. And I've really been impressed with some things that both these teams have done on the base paths. That's why high school baseball is refreshing. After you see, uh, you know, major league games where it's just basically a, a strikeout or a, a long ball. Happenberg looking for a gap. Snook moves over, made a long run, makes a nice catch. To the top of the order in Austin Sweeney is one for two today with a run scored. I'm going to go back to the Marquette run in the third inning. They got one run. Nick Melvin let off with a single. Jay Scott got a sacrifice bump down. Kind of meaningless, right? Wrong. Because after a strikeout with a man on second, Nate Melvin struck out. But Nick, who was stealing third, came all the way home. On a drop third strike, they attempted to throw the runner out at first. And because he was at second base stealing third, they were able to get another run. So don't forget about Jay Scott being in the middle of that run score playing team baseball. You know, and continuing with that Scott theme, he had a bunt his first time up. That was a base hit bunt when there was a little mix-up in coverage, and that was just part of that big eight run on slot. Sweeney just gets a piece of it. It's one and two. Jay Scott called on the bunt twice. Two bunts down. And I'm spot on serious about this. How many times do you see the big league guys drop the head of their bat, pop it up, can't get it done? And they're getting paid multi-millions. And Jay Scott, not getting that much, I don't think. Well, he's hoping to get a first-place medal hung around yep. his neck here in a couple hours. Sweeney will go down looking. Two up, two down. 
John Thompson's retired the last three batters he's faced. Two gone here in the fourth, and Mark Brands will come up to hit for the third time. Brands, one for one. A hit, a walk, and a run scored. That pitch was nasty by Thompson. That had some good, hard, late bite. I tend, to, I tend to watch some ball games. I know that's hard for you to believe. <laughs> Sometimes I'm around my wife and I'll talk about a pitch like that and she'll say, well, why don't they just do that all the time? <laughs> Which is actually a pretty yeah, good question, yeah, right? it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just have good hard late bite all the time. <laughs> There's this word called command, right? To be able to do that all the time. That's why some guys get the big bucks and some guys don't. Kind of like my golf shot. Why don't I just hit it down the middle all the time instead of one out of 18? Simple. <laughs> One ball and two strikes, two outs to Brands. This one to left center coming on hard is Nick Melvin. He was playing pretty deep, but he'll track it down. It's a 1-2-3 inning here in the fourth. We're halfway home in a 9-3 lead in your 1A title game for Marquette Academy. Purchase a DVD keepsake copy of today's event. Click on the blue. Get the DVD button directly under your event video player or click on the buy a DVD button on the top right-hand corner of the NFHS Network website. You can also click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Nine runs, ten hits, and a couple of errors for Marquette Jabot with three runs, six hits, and no errors as we go to the Bottom of the fourth inning, it will be two, three, four. I make that three, four, five in the Marquette Academy order. Logan Kamater along with Max Donahue and Jack Snook will try to get after Mark Brands. Marquette Academy went up and down in order in the first inning, scored eight in the second, and another one in the third, and Kamater will reach. He's hit by a slow breaking ball. That's how we start this inning. Each of the last two innings, Marquette Academy had the leadoff batter reach base and that started innings, scoring innings. Max Donahue's two for two today. He's driven a couple of runs, also scored a run. He's a designated hitter batting for the pitcher, John Thompson. Donahue watched it all the way and he seems to hit the strike zone low and away. So Kamater starts the inning on the first pitch being hit by a pitch. Average size lead over at first. Long hold here from Brands. Donahue pulls back in the button. It's a called strike. It's interesting. You can see it philosophically, Todd Hopkins' team, as he flashes his signs right there on your camera. Most of the Marquette runners have a one-way lead, their weight back toward first. They shorten their lead, but they break very, very early when they're trying to steal a base. It's more of a deceitful kind of way. Instead of, <laughs> instead of getting out as far as you can and shortening the distance, they increase their distance, but they leave really early. 
Pitch to Donahue, rope to right field for a base hit. First and second, nobody out in the fourth. Donahue, three out of three. He had a flare over the third baseman's head, his first hit to start a beginning, and then he's hit a couple rocket shots into right field. See him drop the head of the bat right over the baseball, get that ball down in front of Will Simonton, and once again, the Crusaders have something going. Jack Snook, two-run homer, and that is truly what ignited this team that came in the second inning. It was a blast over the left field fence, and he's going to get another hit. He was four for five yesterday. He gets a second hit today, and that ball will get past the left fielder, Kinchlow. Kamater had stopped at third, and now this ball squirts away, and everybody's going to move up. So you have an, in, an error on Kinslow, and then they get the ball back in. And Brands probably would like to have that play back as to far where he was a ba back up home plate. A run scores, two runners move forward. Snook has hit the ball hard all day long. Snook, all he is All-State in football, All-State in basketball, the Ottawa Times Player of the Year. An IBCA All-Star invitee in basketball. He's a pretty good athlete, isn't he? Boy, he has <laughs> put it on display here in Peoria. Two errors charged on that play, two separate errors. That One came in left field, one came in the infield. A run is in. Runner's second and third now with nobody out for Hayden Price. And in the infield once again forced to play on the grass. Outfield playing very shallow as well. This is sky high and shallow. Reinholz. And nobody's going to move from here. One out. Now bring up Nick Melvin. He has been pesky here in the seventh spot in the order. A couple of base hits, a couple of runs scored. Twelve hits. And we have one out in the fourth inning. Tighten the helmet, spit in the batting gloves, tighten the pants. All of that pre-pitch ritual, getting him ready to go into the box. Melvin, sophomore left fielder. Todd Hopkins calls him his leadoff hitter in the seventh spot in the order. He's demonstrated that here in this one. This is the 1A state championship ball game, Marquette Academy. Finished fourth in 1999, and then just last year, finished fourth, lost in the semifinals to eventual state champion Aurora Christian before dropping the third place game to Goreville. And it was six years ago that Chabot Catholic won a title here in Peoria. That 99 third or fourth place game for Todd Hopkins. 20 years ago, and they still have a lightning bolt in respect to that. He put a lightning bolt on his leg, and now they have it on their hat. That's their, that's their state trophy logo, if you will. Here comes a squeeze. Popped up, and this will be an easy double play. That will close out the inning, but a run will cross the plate. It puts that lead to seven at 10-3 after four. All right, this is Adam. Take two. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or fire because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. 
This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carry out is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple devices. Download the app from the App Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. This is 1A Baseball. We have 2A play coming up, third place game to follow this in 2A. And we'll have a championship game. Pleasant Plains will take on Tutopolis and next week. The fans that will be in Joliet will be talking about 3A and 4A Baseball. Good crowd, though from the Ottawa region and Marquette Academy High School. Yes, indeed. And they're enjoying a 10 to 3 lead here in the state title game. So the dreams coming much closer to reality for the Crusaders as those young ladies just finished the shark song, if you will. Your grandpa shark. I know that your granddaughter was a singer and that did a great job of the national anthem. Well, for this championship game. Maddie was outstanding. Well, thank you very much. Granddaughter Madeline Schmidt goes to University High School just down the road in Normal, Illinois. And there she is. What a girl. She was outstanding. She also uh, had the opportunity to sing at the, the national anthem at the uh, state wrestling finals this year. Wow, you talk about, uh, and that was at the uh, State Farm Center in Champaign. That was a great environment as well. I'm very proud of that young lady. And you should be, and I am not on the executive board of the IHSA, but I bet you we might see her in football or basketball next year <laughs> as well because of her talents. She enjoys it, I will tell you that. Cole Buckner to lead things off here. One ball and two strikes to Buckner. Sacrifice fly and a base hit. And remember those two runs that uh, Chabot scored in the top of the third, kind of uh -huh. narrowed a lead to eight to three, and all of a sudden, how did Mark can't answer? Single run in the third, yeah. single run in the fourth, and back to a seven-run lead. Well, there were a couple of players that were a little disappointed in that. First of all, Cole Buckner thought, oh, shoot, I wish I'd gotten hit with that. And on the other side, it was John Thompson that thought he found the strike zone. Thompson's be his 81st pitch, so that's something to watch here. Deep at third is Reynolds. His long throw across is on target. And John Thompson has settled into it a little bit. He's retired five straight. Reynolds did not catch that ball and feel it in pitcher perfect style, but he got the job done for out number one. You want to catch that ball in front of you? That ball kind of ate him up, hit pretty hard by Buckner, but Reynolds was able to fight it off and make a play solidly done. Now we're in the cleanup spot in the order, and that is Tim Reinholtz. He singled in a run in the third. Jabot Catholic, 27 and 8 record. And Marquette Academy, 32 and 1. Think about that for a second. He won 32 of 33 baseball games. Crazy. Now, I'm not going to dig out the program because I'm very confident there's only been one undefeated state champion. That was Morton, correct? Way back. I, I believe you are right. In the yes. 40s, single class. An undefeated state champion. Reinholds puts a charge into this one. And look out, burn folks. Long gone. A blast from Tim Reinholds, his fifth home run of the year. Oh, my, did he put a charge into that one. Reinholds got it all way up over the berm. And if you look at the scurrying on the concourse up there, the little fellas are chasing down the ball that that big fella just hit. A long, long way. There's the little fellas chasing the game ball from what that big fella just <laughs> distributed out to them. There's the high fives Ooh. in the dugout. The Hawks have a little bit of celebration. Boy, that is the longest ball we've yes. seen hit this weekend. Jack Snook hit a bomb that one another 20 feet beyond it. And those vans that you saw out there, that holds the Pioneers from Alleman. It'll be playing in a third place game in 2A. That will be coming up, scheduled for a 3 o'clock start. We may be close to that. Might be Coach close. Lindo. 
130. We've got to get this one done about 210 or so, maybe. We're in the top of the fifth inning, a 10 to 4 game. Chabot just doesn't go away. Here's Ian Metcalf to second. Extra little hop there for Couch, and he'll get the second out of the inning. Boy, that ball that left Reinhold's bat. Kaboom. Think he knew it? Huh, immediately. Look at where this lands. Look out, everybody. <laughs> Allman players saying, who hit that? <laughs> <laughs> Just a rocket shot laser beam by Reinhold's entertaining the crowd on that one. Allman will be playing Aurora Christian in third place game in Class 2A. Earlier today, it was Steelville defeating Harvest Christian Academy 12 to 6 in the 1A third place game. Tate Schilling at the plate. And a short hop picked by Melvin makes it look easy. Three ground outs, but in the middle of it all was a solo home run and a long one from Tim Reinholz. That's a six-run difference. a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. Grant Waldron will pinch hit for Jay Scott. We have sung the praise of Jay Scott in bunning situations today. This is not, of course, leading off the fifth, so Waldron will get the call. His dad, Brad, assistant coach, we've seen him out on the mound a couple of times, pitched in the Expos organization. Twelve of these Marquette players played on their basketball team, which won a regional. Coached by Todd Hopkins, head basketball, head baseball coach at Otto Marquette. Hopkins, longtime girls basketball coach. He was asked to coach uh, boys basketball. He said, sure. Kind of filled in on an interim basis. Said, you know what? Kind of like it. So he stayed with it here now for about four years. Waldron sends this one to center field. Reinholds is right there. One gone. Head basketball coach on the girls' side for 17 years. He won 371 games. Okay, so 371 wins as a girls' basketball coach. Throw in 541 for boys' baseball. And the head basketball coach for the last four years. Talking about closing in on a thousand. thousand isn't yep. One pitch. Shane Reynolds will send it to left field. That will be a 13th hit of the day for Marquette Academy. A lot of W's. Well, it's been a lot of W's at Ottawa Marquette this year. Between the football, basketball, and baseball teams after the victory yesterday, this group of players, 70 wins and only five losses. They go into every game they expect to win, and yep. why not? Absolutely. 70 of the 75 times you take the field, the floor. Crazy. You win a game. 
Nate Melvin back to the top of the order. Arguably the greatest athlete to ever play at Outer Marquette would be Bob Guyette. Mm -hmm. Remember that name out of the past? Yep. About 6'9", played basketball at the University of Kentucky. Short lead at first for Reynolds. Count is 3-0 and oh to Nate Melvin. He singled in a couple of runs in the second, then he was involved in the play that scored a runner from second base. Swung and missed at strike three, but he was able to beat the throw to first, and meanwhile, Nick Melvin came around from second to score. Looking at that all the way, three balls and a strike in and out. Good pitch to run and hit if you're betting on your batter making contact here. He stays. Now it's three and two. And there was no contact. So normally, if you don't go three one, you don't go three two. Now we're not always normal. Because everybody doesn't play by the book. But if you're not going three one, betting on your hitter, you're probably not betting on him three two. He stays. That's fouled away. Do you ever deviate from that? Oh, for sure. Just the I feel mean, part. The feel. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The feel part. Yep. You know, you're guessing a pitch. You might steal a grip. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Those kinds of things. I think the feel for the game is the most fun part of punching buttons in, in, in any sport you would coach. Pappenberg will come back. And he's able to make the catch. Nice job. Staggered a little bit underneath it. That's the second out of the inning. Good job by Pappenberg getting that mask out of his way. I'll bring up Luke Couch, sophomore second baseman. The starter last year as a freshman. Saw him pitch a little bit yesterday. One inning and two thirds, gave up a couple of runs. He's going to look to lay one down. Oh, look at Brands make the play. What an athlete, like a quick cat. Laying out and taking away a would-be punt hit. In a hurry but want a fresh, affordable meal to serve your family or friends, Biagi's Pronto Packs make it easy to enjoy an authentic Italian meal at home or on the go. Perfectly sized to serve four to five people and starting at only $30, Pronto Packs include your choice of a pasta or two pizzas with a Hauser Caesar salad and freshly baked bread with Biagi's butter for dipping. Or if you're planning a meal for a large group, like our crew here in the NFHS Network, just ask about their party pan. Size for 8 to 12 guests and ready for pickup. With 24 hours advance notice with six Illinois locations, Biagi's carryout is a perfect solution for your busy lifestyle. Well, remember that big gap in the scoreboard when I mentioned earlier that uh, Jabot we should look at and realize they have a lot of time? The, uh, the width is shortening, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Down by six, but this team that can swing the bats. And they are a 7 8 9 in their order. Cameron Kinchlow had a single his last time up. There's an infield variety down the third baseline. 89 pitches right now for John Thompson. So he would love like 26 more. Should be safe through this inning for sure. Thompson gave up a run in the first. 
Two in the third, another one in the fifth. He has scattered seven hits. 9-0 and with 66 strikeouts coming in. They will appeal. Kinchlow did not go. It's been a very workmanlike performance from Thompson. Of course, he got staked to that 8-1 to yes, lead in the second inning and gives you a little bit more margin of error. And that eats up Reynolds. He'll recover and throw. And the collision at first base as Hunter Hayden Price knocked down. Kinchlow will get to second. And that is one of those unavoidable situations as that throw took Price right into the line of Kinchlow. So you probably have a double error there, and there was nothing intentional or nothing blatant at all. And Kinchlow comes right now to shake hands. Really nice job there. Good picture of sportsmanship exhibited right there by both of those players. Bottom line is two guys playing the game hard, yep. playing for a state championship. That's what it that's what it amounted to there. Kinchlow is at second for Eric Schrader. He's 0 for 2 today. There's a little bit of pride going on in the Schrader household here at this stage. His older brother Matt was a right fielder on the 2013 state championship team. Well, Eric has to help the cause here. Out evens at a ball and a strike. Pretty good pitch to hit. Here's the sportsmanship that we had talked about right there, and then a little bit of hug. Really good job by Kinslow, and a really good job accepting that by Hayden Price. Sportsmanship does indeed matter. Fisting it to right field. Down it goes. Kinslow had to hold for a moment. Runners at the corners. Nobody out in the sixth. Oh, I sometimes we get a chance to call home run balls high above the berm. Sometimes we get a chance to call fist shots. That was a fist shot right there. But what a good piece of hitting it was by Schrader to go inside out of that ball. Just continue to fight it off. Not try to do anything he shouldn't, but put that ball in place strong enough to find the outfield grass. And trying to get it cooking. The Hawks are flying right now. To the number nine hitter, Josh Pappenberg. Chabot Catholic chasing six. Pitch 96 is a breaking ball that he got underneath big time. All that did was spin. Quite honestly, he's fortunate it wasn't over the plate because it would have been a very hittable ball. 2-0. and oh. Nobody out here in the top of the sixth inning. Brad Walter is going to call a timeout to settle his pitcher and buy some time. Coming up, Rock Island Alleman taking on Aurora Christian in the third place game in Class 2A. And then our 2A championship game will wrap up our weekend in Peoria. Pleasant Plains will face Teutopolis. So Jalen Flavel is down in the bullpen loosening up. He's not a pitcher. So whatever relief pitcher Todd Hopkins has in mind is on the field right now. And I have not seen anybody else loosen up prior to this, which means if they make a change this inning, somebody's going to come in relatively, from a pitching standpoint, relatively cold. Yesterday, Bryce Jones threw 37 pitches. Shane Reynolds came on in relief through 59. Luke Couch threw 26 pitches. Here's the big at bat from Pappenberg. Junior catcher hits with an open stance. Two balls and one strike. You know, and one would think it would be Couch because yesterday Flavel came in and right. took over Couch's position at second. Straight flip-flop. Yep. And Couch was under the 30-pitch count, so he could throw 90 today. Pappenberg ropes this one, curving and down. So couldn't get there. Kinslow will score the throw to second. And Pappenberg out trying to stretch 
into a double. Oh, the good news is Pabenberg hit that ball right on the screws. The bad news is he ran into and out as guess who? Jack Snook cut that ball off. Just a really, really fine play in right field and got it in a heartbeat. Easy tag for Nate Melvin because they had a little bit of a rally going. They still do. But that one hurt badly when you're chasing five runs. Top of the order in Austin Sweeney. One for three today. Difference been narrowed to five. Here's Pappenberg. That's a good stroke on it. And he's thinking when that ball is near the line, he's I'm thinking he's thinking too. Look at that athletic play though. He runs that ball down, gets it on the bounce barehanded with one hand and gets the ball in. What an athlete he is, Jack Snook. We got it quickly to Luke Couch, and Couch never hesitated. He was going two all the way. Big out at second base. 0-2 count now to Sweeney. Chabot scored in four of the six innings. Look at the board. Five run difference. There's a whole. There, and it's a mental thing with me. Five runs feels a whole lot different than four. Yeah. You get it to four with an inning to play. Put some people on the bases. So that's a big runner down there at third. One out. This will stay in the infield. Couch wants it. Two gone. He'll be up to Brands. If you're looking for an RBI in a given situation, this is a pretty good man to have the play. Brands with 25 RBIs, but a 453 batting average. 46 runs scored for Brands. One today, 47. It means he gets on, he gets in. Brands had a run scored, or two runs scored yesterday, so he's got 49 runs scored on the season. The two games in the regional, he reached base and scored every single plate appearance. Thompson's pitch to the left field. Nick Melvin is there. So the damage is minimalized. One run in the inning, couple of hits, couple of errors. It's 10 to 5. We go to the bottom of the sixth. I had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Marquette Academy will look to build on this five-run lead, 3-4-5 in the order. Logan Kamater, Max Donahue, and Jack Snook. Kamater today with a double, a couple of runs scored. Donahue is three for three, He's driven in two, scored one. Jack Snook, two for three, including a two-run homer. It's a pretty lethal part of the order. You like runs and hits? We've had that all weekend long. On the first pitch to Sweeney, to Buckner, and an out. Uh, pitcher's best friend, first pitch outs. Mark Brands rolls along 86 pitches. He has allowed 10 runs on 13 hits. We've had five errors in this game. 
Here's Max Donahue. Franz has not been able to solve him. Talk about the lack of familiarity with teams, especially when you get here to the state finals, especially in 1A and 2A with the right. very geographic regions. But So there's no spray charts. However, you take a look at shortstop Tate Schilling. He's definitely shaded up the middle. The outfield plays straight away. In fact, the right side of the infield straight away as well. So there's some tendencies or at least an indication as to how they might pitch Donahue. Count now one and two. Donahue goes right through that pitch up and in. Two up, two down. Donahue has had a really good game, though. He got his money's worth right there. Location up and in just tied him up. Three strikeouts for Mark Brands, and he will face Jack Snook. Four for five yesterday, two for three today. A home run today, and a double yesterday. Had three runs batted in yesterday. He talked about his... Athletic accomplishments and recognition. What a way to go out. And he is just three outs away from winning a state title. And this ball is hit hard. Hit deep to left center field. Off the wall. Snook will stand up at second base. As he put on a show. Kaboom. Watch the barrel get through. As he loads it up. Brands thought that one was gone. <laughs> he did. If he would have pulled it, he would have been gone. But what a tournament he has had. He listed his all-state accomplishments in football and basketball. And you've seen what he's done here. So you say, well, what's he going to do in college? The plan is to play college basketball and possibly football. Is there room for a three-sport athlete in college? I don't know if he could do it. Yep. Alleman Pioneers in the berm down in the left center field alley. They were looking right at that ball that rocketed off the wall. They will take on Aurora Christian. The game scheduled to go off at about 3 o'clock. We should be pretty close with that. 5A championship game will follow that. 50% chance of rain here from about 5 o'clock on, so we have to make sure we dodge all of that. How are you going to do that? You know, the one thing <laughs> I haven't figured out yet, I always check the radar on my phone, but I really can't move that those clouds and storms off with my <laughs> finger. I try to drag them off the screen. It just doesn't happen. And as I say that, we're told that rain is supposed to start in 113 minutes. Is that right? And that would be a little less than two hours. We will see. Runner at second, Hayden Price at the plate. Can never have too many. Love to get one more if you're a fan of Otto Marquette. Price looking for his first hit in this game. Crusaders have 14 of them. Yesterday, Marquette Academy jumped out to an eight to nothing lead, had the game tightened up on them a little bit on a couple of occasions, ended up winning 10 to eight over Harvest Christian. And another 10 spot here today. Hayden Price got out and around that ball, breaking ball away. Got his hands out in front. Two balls and a strike with Snook returning to second base. This will be Brand's 96th pitch of the day. Talked about the heady player that Brands is, the 33 ACT, and there's a case of he varied his time yep. on the mound with a runner at second base, looked at him, looked home, looked back. Yeah, pitchers need to understand their control of the pace of the game. Sometimes they can slow that pace down and should. 
sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement to, to pick that pace up and keep the game moving with rhythm and tempo. Bob Hopkins, after a quick little conversation with Gary Taylor, will head back to that third base coaching box. He got a tattoo for a lightning bolt on his leg. What would he do for a state championship? <laughs> I bet you he's thought about it. <laughs> I bet there's people that made some suggestions to him as well. Three and one to Price. And he'll head down with the walk. Two quick outs in the inning, then a double and a walk. The walk's keeping things alive. Evan Green will come on to run for Price. Well, we are told that the itinerary was going to be the same for Marquette Academy as last year. They had to modify a little bit today because last year. Yes, they had to modify. They played in the 9 o'clock game. They third place game today they had to push it back a little bit the one thing I want to know is did they indeed go miniature golfing on Thursday night that was the plan big cut from Nick Melvin whatever keeps young men happy right they would have been competing in that too oh I boy I'll you tell that. you what you you have guys that have gone 70 and 5 you don't think there's going to yep. be some cutthroat play in that miniature golf course they probably want to beat Todd Hopkins <laughs> Ball and a strike. The lead at second is Snook. Green will take a lead at first base. Pitch number 100. Brand needs just one pitch to get out of this. Time is called by Josh Papenberg because the runner at second base, Jack Snook, was relaying location of that pitch. As a hitter, would you like that or would you not? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Give me any advantage I can well, when I hit. You know, and some people, they will they say. They want to concentrate on the ball, right? Yep. Or, or the one time I get crossed up. I mean, if you signal outside and a pitcher makes a mistake, he comes inside, then you don't trust your, your runner at second base when, in fact, it could have been a pitcher that just missed his location. But I've heard I've heard of players that uh, don't want it. Yeah. I don't want it. If, if signs are being stolen, I don't want it. The best thing that, I've, that I, I get with players is, you know, you steal signs, you flash them. Every team has their own way of doing that. And steal a sign, they get a hit. Steal a sign, they get a hit. Steal a sign, they get a hit. And then all of a sudden you steal one, it might be wrong. <laughs> and then they pout <laughs> and moan forever like, oh, you're right. <laughs> Come on, young man. <laughs> You know, I'm 75%. You're hitting 300s. <laughs> <laughs> two and two here to Nick Melvin. This is slicing away from the right fielder. And it's down and past Will Simonton. Snook scores easily. Here comes Green. It will be a two-run triple from Nick Melvin. And there's that extra separation we talked about. They're starting to feel it now. Somehow that seven runs and the excitement behind it really makes you feel like they're going to get it done here and be able to cruise through this one. You see the emotion starting to build. That's a great shot right there. You had Snook crossing home plate in emphatic fashion. You had the dugout, and the fans behind him. The lead back to seven, 12 to five. Jay Scott back in. He came in to do the catching. He was hit for the last time up. Runner at third. It's Nick Melvin. Brands was one pitch away from getting out of the inning. That one pitch turned into a two-run triple. Got 
a piece of about three different players. We've had three separate occasions that Marquette Academy has been up by seven. They led eight to one, 10 to three, and now 12 to five. That big eight run second inning, an eight run nine hit second inning. 12 batters came to the plate in that inning. And that came after a 1-2-3 first inning. Yeah. No doubt. That's snowman on the board in the second. Catapult them into a would-be state title. 15 hits to help along those 12 runs. Jay Scott has had three at-bats today. He has a bunt for a base hit, a sacrifice bunt, and a walk. Pretty solid day. We'll get a courtesy runner for Scott. And don't look now, but the winning run is on first base. The winning run will be at home plate. Base is loaded, right? Or am I? Did I miss somebody? First and third, because Nick okay, Melvin. That's right. He scored. He ended up at third following the yes. triple. So. Pinch runner down at first base is Liam Doherty. How about Liam Doherty? He's a valedictorian. Yes, he is. Marquette Academy. Have a new pitcher for Jabot. 107 pitches thrown by Mark Brands. We'll fill you in on the new hurler for the Hawks when we come back. Austin Sweeney comes on to try to get the final out here in the sixth inning, and he'll be facing Shane Reynolds. A little bit of a switch in the middle of the field as Brands went to short from the pitcher's mound. That pushed Schilling over to second, and the second baseman, Austin Sweeney, ends up on the mound. We'll check his numbers for the senior after this pitch. Sweeney's pitching in his fifth game of the season. He's 3-0, and so very efficient his first four games. Nine and third innings pitched, six strikeouts, two base on balls, only one earned run. So an earned run average of 0.75 for the senior. Fouled out of play. Doherty was running on the pitch on a 1-2 count. Reynolds today, very productive out of the ninth spot in the order. A couple of hits and a run scored. Throw down, not in time, and a steal of home for Nick Melvin. So I like the aggressiveness of Todd Hopkins. Some of you say, oh, you're up seven runs. What are you stealing for? Well, look at the scoreboard. There's already been an eight-run inning in this game. You get a chance to win a state championship, you win it. You get a chance to try to get it in six innings, you get that job done. You're not showing somebody up. If anything, you're showing respect for your opponent. And the offense that they put up five runs, nine hits of their own. Reynolds able to get a piece of that one. It's 13 to 5. Three runnings in the inning here in the bottom of the sixth. Up through the middle. Being waved is Doherty. 
And that will be the 14th run of the game. And a four-run inning here in the sixth. And they turn the lineup over. Base hit up the middle, 16 hits up on the board, pulls his hands in, drives the ball through. 14 runs on 16 hits. At the top of the order is Nate Melvin. They're hitting four at bats today. When you talk about winning a championship one way or another, Shane Reynolds at first base, he technically is the winning run here yep. in the sixth inning. If he crosses the plate this inning, that's the 10 run rule, and this game is over. He's got 270 feet to go, however. One ball, one strike to Melvin. It's the eighth Crusader to bat this inning. There he goes. The throw down. Tagged in the helmet, and he is out. So that will finish off this sixth inning. A four spot goes on the board and a nine run lead as we go to the seventh. All right, this is Adam. Take two. Yes. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I would encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. I had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Ottawa Marquette, just three outs away for the first ever state baseball championship. And a 14-5 lead and a new pitcher looking to finish this one up. And that will be Luke Couch, as we projected. He will come on to face three, four, five members of this order. Luke Couch comes in 2-0. 0 0.55 earned run average. 13 strikeouts against just one base on ball. So very solid there. Couch did indeed throw 1.2 innings yesterday. Only threw 26 pitches. He needed to be below 30, and he was. Struck out one, walked one, and allowed two runs. Cole Buckner at the plate. He has a hit in this game. Todd Hopkins was directing traffic, the head coach for Mark Head. He was pointing to his first baseman, Hayden Price, get on the line. He is on the line. Third baseman Shane Reynolds hugging the line. And that pitch goes behind. Buckner totally behind He's in a few of those this weekend you know you're here long enough you see enough things and you watch eight baseball games a weekend you see an awful lot of crazy things in this game three balls and no strikes couch looking for the strike zone here to start the top of the seventh inning Finds it there. Three and one. Leadoff hitter. Buckner be followed by Tim Reinholtz, then Ian Metcalf. Buckner will look at strike two. Good comeback. Just keep pouring strikes. Just tell our pitchers, put it on a tee. Just put it, let them hit it. Here's the three two. A lot of folks from the Ottawa area thought that was close enough. But instead, Buckner down to first base with the walk. 
And they'll get a runner for him. Will Jansen comes out of that Chabot dugout. Well, the last time Tim Reinhold swung a bat, it landed up on the concourse area beyond the left field wall, beyond the left field berm, and nearly out of Dozer Park altogether. It was a bomb. Couch comes inside and gets called strike. You know, right about in that area, those kids are sitting right there. That's where it landed. Call before you dig, call before you hit me. <laughs> Very quickly now, 0-2. Oh Short lead at first for Jansen. I don't think Couch needs to worry about the runner on base. This one is at high and deep. And look out, some school buses there. That one left Dozer Park. Over by Caterpillar Building. Out on Jefferson Street here in Peoria. Jefferson Street connects Dozer Park and the Peoria Civic Center in Carver Arena, the site of the IHSA Boys Basketball Championships. Reinholds hits this one well. The left center field. This is carrying deep. Kamater at the track, and he'll make the catch right in front of the wall. Well, add up the total distance on the last two balls that Reinholz has hit. Long way. Man. And that ball was hit into deep left center field. If that one was pulled, it also would have left the yard. Mm -hmm. 310 down the line, 402 straightaway center. That ball was probably hit 375, quite honestly, 380. As the wall continued to jet out towards center, get deeper, deeper depth. Note to opponents on Chabot Catholic's schedule next year, Reinholz will return. He's just a junior. So you, you telling him for next March 18th or 20th or whatever, pitch around him? <laughs> <laughs> Not telling anybody what to do. <laughs> just saying, watch the films. Ian Metcalf will look to register a hit here in this game, and instead, the couch comes right at him. Wind blowing out now to center field. Center fielder Kamater comes in a bit. He's been playing very deep today. And down on strikes goes Metcalf. Now they'll be on their feet. That is Peyton the edge right there. Where black and white meet strike three. We're going to get a pinch hitter here for Tate Schilling with two outs in the seventh. Nobody's emerged from the dugout as of yet. So Luke Couch looking to come on and finish this one off. Preston Oberkfell, a senior with only 15 at bats, but a senior gets an opportunity to play right there. Tip of the cap to Andy Scare on this substitution. You know, that's one of those things that I, I don't know if people appreciate enough what high school coaches yep. do when that is all part of the game plan. You know, there, there's bunts to be had, and we're going to hit and run, but this is part of the plan as well. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a fine time to get Preston into the game. Couch starts with the strike. Crusaders guys on the edge of the dugout, hoping they're, they're not there much longer. They're ready to leap that yeah. fence. Ball bounces in. Well, Jansen heads down to second. They were not going to contest it anyway. There they are. And there they hope not to be in a pitch or two. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two outs. Oberkfell will step in with that open stance. Strike two. 
And here come the Crusader fans. Chopping at the bit. They're the chopping of the championship. And that will do it. Your 1A champs from Ottawa Marquette Academy. Pile on, fellas, you deserve it. First state baseball championship in school history. The Crusaders finish off a 33-1 season with a 14-5 win over Chabot. Marquette Mark came into this ball game looking to redeem themselves from last year's fourth place finish. And boy, did they send a message here in Peoria this weekend. Well, they had a celebration at regional title, a celebration at sectional title, a super sectional celebration, but none like today. And that's the one that catapulted him to get it going early on. The home run of a state champion. As the hit parade continued, they had 16 of them here in the afternoon. 1A baseball season has come to a close. The last team standing, the Crusaders from Marquette Academy. Final score, Marquette 14, Jabot 5. For our entire NFHS crew, for Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhardt. That closes out the 1A season. We have to crown some 2A champions, and that will come to Peoria next. Thank you.